This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2372, Life Balance Disruptors and Protectors, How to Find Better Life Balance, Increase Self-Care, and Improve Your Well-Being, by Rachel Cable of rachelcable.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator. And we're gonna jump right into today's post as we optimize your life. Life Balance Disruptors and Protectors, How to Find Better Life Balance, Increase Self-Care, and Improve Your Well-Being by Rachel Cable of rachelcable.com. This may sound strange since I'm writing an article about it, but I don't actually believe in life balance. I personally don't think my life is balanced. I spend more time working than engaging in self-care. My home life is far more prolific than my social life. I don't have enough hours in the day to spread my time equally between all the things I care about. However, I do believe in feeling balanced and I'm really excited to share some of my top tips so you can hopefully feel me. Feeling balanced means I'm generally satisfied with how much time I spend in the different areas of my life. I'm not overwhelmed by to-do lists and feeling like I'm constantly running out of time. My physical and mental health are as good as they can be i.e. getting enough sleep, eating regular meals, engaging in self-care, etc. Stress is well-managed and I can properly enjoy the fun times in my life. And I listen to my intuition about what I need and make sure I prioritize self-care and quality time with my loved ones. However, this is simply my personal perspective on what life balance feels like. You may have an entirely different idea about how life balance feels, and I'd like to encourage you to think about the questions and determine your own definition of life balance. Which life areas are most important to me and do I prioritize them enough? Am I as healthy as I'd like to be? Do I have realistic goals to work towards? Am I properly managing stress and other factors which can be linked to unbalance, such as fatigue or illness? Do I listen to my needs and fulfill them? Are there any areas of my life which I feel are taking over and can I do anything about that? Am I aware of my balance disruptors and protectors? And speaking of balance disruptors and protectors, you might be wondering what they actually are. Balance disruptors are essentially the things in our lives which tend to interfere with how balanced we feel, while balance protectors usually enhance our sense of balance and protect it even during challenging times. Balance disruptors. A few of my own balance disruptors include stress, because it seems like the one thing I'm stressed about is taking over my whole life. Alcohol, essentially whenever I drank alcohol, I felt nauseous and sad. And social media. There was a time when I wasted hours on social media and felt overwhelmed by comparison and the fear of missing out. It's important to at least be aware of your biggest balance disruptors so you can plan for any unbalance they may cause. For example, If stress is one of your balance disruptors and you know there's a stressful change or event happening at work, you can implement a self-care plan and let your supports know you might need some extra help. Awareness of your balance disruptors is great. However, you can also consciously choose to minimize the impact of them if it's possible. I used to drink a few glasses of wine most nights and even more than that if I went out. And eventually I decided I couldn't keep doing that if I wanted to feel well-balanced in my life. I now only drink alcohol for special occasions, and even then, I don't overconsume. Feel free to experiment with your balance disruptors and notice how you can minimize their impact, but try to also have some fun with it. Implement changes slowly and in small doses, check in with yourself regularly, and perhaps even organize a support network to keep you accountable. Balance protectors. My most important balance protectors are good quality sleep, support, mindfulness and meditation, exercise, and self-care. When the balance protectors aren't being incorporated regularly into my life, I tend to notice myself feeling out of balance. The good news is, I can quickly turn that feeling around by consciously taking the time to go to bed early, talk to someone who cares about me, practice mindfulness, especially creative activities like photography, meditate, and do some of my favorite self-care activities, such as take a bath or read a book. To discover your own balance protectors, look at the things in your life which tend to have a positive impact on how balanced you feel. 
perhaps particular activities, foods, people, places, objects, music, or animals. Whichever balance protectors you choose, be sure to think about the importance of self-care. How do you take care of yourself when your life is a little unbalanced and there isn't a lot you can do to change it? For example, when I had my wisdom teeth surgery in early 2017, I was feeling quite unbalanced because I couldn't leave the house and I wasn't being as active as usual. I also wasn't eating regularly because it was so difficult. And when I did eat, it wasn't my normal food. It was important for me to engage in good self-care as much as I could to maintain a sense of balance. How to make time for self-care. One of the challenges I've heard people face when it comes to self-care is not having enough time. Here's my top three tips for making time for self-care. Number one, replace time spent watching TV or scrolling social media with self-care. These two activities used to take up much more time than I realized. When I wanted to incorporate more self-care into my life, it was simple enough to replace 20 minutes each day of TV or social media time with self-care. Number two, change your perspective. Sometimes we do things to take care of ourselves and forget that we're actually engaging in self-care. For example, taking a warm shower, reading a book, sleeping in, cuddling a loved one, and putting on moisturizer or other skincare products. Rather than incorporating new self-care practices into your life, start to shift your perspective on what self-care is to include many things you already do. And number three, look for opportunities. Lying in bed at night when you can't sleep, commuting to work, waiting in queues. These are just a few examples of times when you could do a meditation or mindfulness practice to engage in self-care. You just listened to the post titled Life Balance Disruptors and Protectors, How to Find Better Life Balance, Increase Self-Care, and Improve Your Well-Being by Rachel Cable of rachelcable.com. Thank you to Rachel. She makes a great point because what exactly is balance? What does a balanced life look like? Some of us are introverts and simply need more time alone to feel good and to recharge, whereas some of us are extroverts that recharge by being around the energy of other people. So what's balanced for me can look completely different to life balance for you. And those questions she shared at the beginning of the article are a great starting point to become more aware of that balance and to put us on a path of making changes that could help us feel more balanced. Some of those questions were, am I as healthy as I'd like to be? Do I have realistic goals to work towards? Do I listen to my needs and fulfill them? By asking these questions, and on a regular basis, we can be more mindful of our current circumstances and then discover what we need to do to get back on track. So with that, stay on track, have a great rest of your day and night, and we'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life Oh, wait.